right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Born Under Punches, the show where we talk about Matthew McConaughey's book and why he seems to glorify how much abuse his parents inflicted upon each other and himself and his brothers. Um, joining me today is my co-host, Kelly. Kelly, do you have any thoughts on Say what now? Um, Matthew McConaughey's book. How do you feel about it? What are your thoughts? I know you've read it cover to cover. Uh, you said six times. Yeah, uh, I didn't realize it was possible for someone to like take their shirt off in a book. Mm -hmm. But he, like you know, he did it. And if there was anybody who was going to do it, it was going to be him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it kind of wiped a lot of like each time I got. So when I say cover to cover. Um, what I mean is that like from one part of my bed under the covers to the other part of my bed under the covers. Right. Like I have two different blankets on my bed, depending on my mood, you know, right. like everyone does. So the actual content of the book I read six times was from the beginning to the part where he takes his shirt off, mm -hmm. which is like three pages in. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's actually page two. Um, yeah. Um, you know I mean? Yeah, I, I have the large print edition because my eyes are all fucked up. Right. So I think it's page three for me. Yeah, that's fair. So um, can you fill me in on the rest of it? Because I had a hard time. I kept having to start over because I was really hot and bothered. And then I forgot everything I'd read before that. And that's fair. I actually had to read it um, like the first chapter four or five times before I could uh, stop blacking out um, from pure lust. Um, and then I got to the rest of the book and was so horrified that I um, had to read it again because I blacked out from that. Um, had to or got to? Both. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. You go so, on. Yeah. I was, I'm interrupting you again. It's typical. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's uh, really exciting how people are finding new mediums to um, portray their art. Um, and he really has made an art of taking his shirt off. Um, so the fact that he's able to do that in new and exciting ways and uh, turn that into an entire memoir is uh, wonderful. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Um, mm -hmm. Did you have any your memoir coming up? Thing to talk about or a thing else thing to talk about this morning or should we this morning or should we uh take that segue and talk about introduce our guest i kind of think we need to talk about that nicole what time of day do you think it is right now this is what i want to know i mean it's late enough that i'm drinking a beer so it's at least 9 a.m okay mm. i mean i'll check with the producer josh is it at least 9 a.m I'm going to say at least 9 a.m. Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So uh, I, I, no more questions. I, I rest my case. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so what were you about to segue to smoothly? Um, I was going to talk about something about taking someone's shirt off. Art. And speaking of art, let's look at our guest, local artist, Micah. <laughs> I can do it again. Yeah, so let's let's get our wide cam going and try that again. Welcome, local artist and gymnast, Micah. Hi. I would give that like a 10 out of 10 for acrobatics, um, but like a four out of ten for being in sync with the music that i was <sighs> playing i tried kelly yeah i know my best yeah maybe next time yeah okay um yeah so what are your thoughts on the uh on McConaughey gate as they're calling it 
You know, he was my childhood crush. Um, ever since uh, Brokeback Mountain, <laughs> I just can't get enough. <laughs> Was Matthew McConaughey in Brokeback Mountain? I don't. I don't think I've seen either of those movies. So. <laughs> See, you're already doing bits. You were so worried about the bits. I wasn't worried. Happening. I was just like, okay. what's a bit? Well, you you always kind of just seem perennially worried. So, <laughs> fuck off, Kelly. <laughs> oh, I like I like this guest already. Yeah. Yay. Is, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So I think we need to get down to our first order of business. What's this about? It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's all about love. Do you think if I frame it? Oh, see, this is where we should have put it. Yeah. Like, Can we make that happen? Do we have any little tables that are like mm. right there? Do you, Josh, you want to just sit under here just the whole time it. and yeah. hold it up? If you move it up a little bit, it'll be perfectly framing Kelly's face. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. No, we're oh. good. We'll just I hang out that. like this the whole time. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> We're doing amazing work so far. <laughs> so I think this is a great time um, for Nicole to read her prepared interview questions while I mop this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Micah, as a local artist and the authority on art in the room, mm -hmm. um, what is art? Baby, don't hurt me. Love that question. Um, I think art is anything that makes you, that takes you out of your, the conscious world that we live in, the everyday realities, the boring kind of capitalist structures that we live in. I think it's something more than just going to the movies, but maybe like less than going to the circus, some, somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So like out of the conscious world? A little bit. So like morphine is art. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm already excited because you brought a bag of art here. I, you? I did bring a bunch oh, of morphine. Kelly. <laughs> well, I was told to supply my own art supplies, no, and if that I is really the case, thought it was I a good totally idea to sit the drink on the mic stand. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how anybody could fault me for that. So anyway, it's great. Uh, the, I'm glad you brought morphine because it will get me off the whiskey. Yeah. <sighs> I definitely thought that the number that's counting next to the live was the number of guests. And you I was like, wow, this is, say that. this is steadily increasing. Like, what? there's so many people watching this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I saw the next 900 thing. of my closest friends that you were doing this. <laughs> and then I saw the other one that was an I. And I'm like, oh, it's zero. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Well, isn't <laughs> like, well, I mean, you don't have to throw us under the bus like that. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get viewers. Kelly. I was going to make a really great <laughs> joke. Yeah, you posted this on your socials, right? I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. See, Nicole, this is why we used to introduce the show with a fake title so that at least the guests could have an incorrect idea of what the show was called. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I I just felt like I was running out of puns. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I didn't know that well, it would be travesty to everyone in my life if I ever run out of puns. So I can't use them all up on the show. You've just got like one left so that like you're technically it's like ha keeping a dollar like in a safe at home so you're never broke. Mm -hmm. Didn't some weird billionaire do that? What? I don't Is know. He... I might this might be the this might be like the the contact high from all the whiskey I spilled on myself. <laughs> but there was like you, you know those 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 annoying old stories about like oh Jim Carrey wrote himself a check for a million dollars and then he framed it and then he won he a million dollars in movies so he's a good person and there was I don't know I feel like some sort of like I want to say it was like a Bill Gates type it was um some someone who did some incredible gimmick like they I don't know like. I'm making this up completely, but they encased a penny in concrete and like built it into their foundation, so they'd like they'd, they'd never be broke because they like had a penny. I don't know. I mean, if you own a house, you have a lot more equity than that penny. So I'm really not sure if this is true, but I feel like it. That somebody did that, and I'm appropriately angry about it. Yeah, I mean, I heard the best way to become a billionaire is just to hide all of your money in a safe and not invest it or use it to leverage against other people in order to get them to give you more money. 
and I heard the best way to become a billionaire is to buy uh, JPEGs of monkeys that have hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the new thing. Mm-hmm. So this is a yeah, actually, this is a great interview question. So as an artist, um, how do you feel about the fact that you're about to get rich off of NFTs? <laughs> I actually want to puke um, <laughs> everywhere because of that. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's a fair um, reaction. And so, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's fair because really yes, it is stupid, but on the other hand, it's extremely bad for the environment. Which is the best thing. Yeah. So, I, to catch you up to speed <laughs> on um, some earlier episodes of this show, which I still haven't told you the name of, mm-hmm. other than when I told you like six months ago, um, is that we are a pro climate change program. Uh, okay. We're fully in favor of it. Everything about it is good. I mean, were you outside today? Uh, yeah. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I'm against that. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't vote for that more times than I wanted to be, and each time I regretted even more. And um, I, I'm just like extremely glad I did not get smoked by anyone on any of the roads I drove on. So this might be really um, controversial, but I actually really like this weather. Mm-hmm. Go on. I mean, it's not as fun as summer. You can't like prance around and mm-hmm. see the butterflies, but there's mm-hmm. something like bitter about it that just feeds my soul that's the most emo kid shit i've ever heard what can i say (laughs) i'm noticing you're wearing all black under all of the colors i did bring a pink outfit and then i kind of chickened out yeah you really chickened out on not wait it's over there (laughs) yeah we'll put it on all right we'll we'll cover for you fuck that's the spirit um sure Um, so while she's gone, Nicole, uh, I think we need to have a quick uh, huddle here about how long it's funny to make Josh sit on the floor and at what point it just becomes bullying. I mean, I think it's always been bullying, but I think it just uh, depends how much of that you're willing to accept into your life. Like, I've fully accepted that it's my goal and job in life to bully Josh, but I've also known him for years. So, um, yeah, it's up to you. If you... If you're not ready to fully commit to um, your darker side, then we should let him up. All right. But I'm going to make him play his own intro music. Um, and I'm really going to just gonna enjoy watching him flail at. No, he's doing so well. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to maximize the live view because I can only assume he's also going to do incredible. You know what? You're marginally visible in the live camera. I feel like. Yeah. Oh, I'm in your way now. The important thing is not to steal your thunder, but I'm wearing pink now. Wow. Yeah, Micah. Thanks. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um. No, you stole my thunder. You you can just have it. Go. No, it was his thunder because he just got, just walked in. I should probably turn this thing on now so everyone doesn't have to deal with garbage audio. Yeah, see, I was going to say, like, no matter how mistimed we might get with the video cues or how long we leave the black screen uh, up as the main video source, um, we're never going to fuck up as bad as me not turning my mic on and no one telling me. So, like, it's just always onward and upward from here. Exactly. We, we only get better each episode until we don't. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I think the only way we could fuck up more is if, yeah, there we go. I was going to say, if we keep this black screen in the center of all of us and we're just all lined up on the side in a column. That's uh, that's not how you guys prefer to do your Zoom conversations? I mean, I prefer it. I don't like to be center stage, but I hear that it's better for viewers if they can see all of our faces. That makes sense, even though I look, again, like a twice divorced trucker because I refuse to shave my November mustache halfway into December. So in in this scenario, which is the divorce that, like, really led to the aesthetic? Was it the first divorce or the second divorce that kind of broke you? I I think it's, like, the first divorce is when you start getting, like, that five o'clock shadow, like, every day where they're just like, Jesus, this man 
does not care enough but then after that that gets you like that that early seduction where it's like he's kind of a bad boy and then the right. second divorce happens and you're just like i'm just gonna let it all go now it's over i'm actually impressed that you got through two divorces successfully like that's got to be hard like there's lawyers and papers involved like signatures involved like that's work well the best thing to do is start with some fraud by not signing your real name on the marriage certificate and then te technically it's not a divorce it's an annulment but you just call it a divorce to play the victim mm -hmm. i like that always have a scam ready mm -hmm. so i mean I, i'm not sure like how liberally i would throw around the word successfully there but he did get from a to b in terms of um not having the partner anymore and i think that's what matters is the fact that you're able to drag your husk into the next day to face the next punishment that's that's what our that's what our world is all about is everybody here single um define single um that's a good that's a really wow yeah first you have to define art now you have to define single it means not romantically loving anybody uh, that is mutual <laughs> right yeah so if i'm in this weird like loveless or i won't say loveless because if the person is like way into me and i'm like really kind of completely leading them on um and you know like gaslighting them and um really kind of just like giving all these little like peaks of sunshine to imply i'm just about to come around the corner like i'm still single then is what you're saying because it's not mutual. Yep. Right. So, so like, it's it's not a relationship if one of the people is dog shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> so when I'm off at like Funky Buddha or whatever, am I dating myself with that? Does that still exist? That's that's cute. I think you can roll with that. Yeah. If I'm if I'm if I'm off at like uh, uh, whatever that shitty bar they replaced Elephant Castle with, um, and I'm I'm rolling up to like, you know the the waitress or the the uh i guess bartender is what i'm looking for or like the you know the janitor or the cop or whoever's there and i'm just like yeah you know i'm you know single and i do little air quotes like mm -hmm. i'm not lying i mean you convinced me but i'm not like the authority on it i'm just the authority on art mm. and speaking of which um yeah let's do it yeah, let's make some art, you guys. So a little um, context for the audience here. So um, as a renowned artist, art historian, art teacher, art critic, um, Mike is going to get us up to speed um, because the thing about our show, as it were, is a lot of people have made very pointed criticisms to suggest that it's very close to being a podcast. and I think the best way to get away from that is to be art because there's absolutely no goddamn way a podcast will ever be art. I am the Roger Ebert of criticizing podcasts. They will never be art. So you think that by making it and showing people a physical thing, we're getting farther away from the horrible podcast world? Yeah, like I think if we become art, like if we just merge with art, then we can just we can use all kinds of really um, fancy terms to define ourselves like oh no it's actually like theater 2.0 or uh, it's like um, counter cultural uh, uh, like living paintings I don't know how artists talk see this is the thing is you need to explain this stuff to us so that we can have cred I thought that was really actually fucking horrible <laughs> What about what about avant-garde audiovisual media presentation? I love that. Yeah, see, this is why we keep you around. Ah, fair enough. You're you're the you're the labels guy. Okay, can you tell I us what avant-garde actually means, though, or did you just say that to sound smart? Uh, oh, totally the latter. I have no idea what that means. I feel like every time someone uses avant-garde, it's just like I want to pretend that I've made a movie that nobody has ever made before, and this is the way I'm going to do it. Perfect. Well, and that's really what we're doing right now, is we're making yeah. a movie no one has ever made before. And that movie is... Kelly Interrupts. That's the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll laugh at my own joke. Interrupting Fuck is an art form, wouldn't you say, Josh? I'm laughing at my own joke. Fuck you. Uh, so I, I'm really excited about this because I don't know what's in the bag. 
What's in the bag? Yeah, so I really want... What's in the bag? <laughs> yeah, I really want the... Seven, anybody? No? Nothing. What's in the box? The last scene? I, I, Whoa. I'm i not sure. On. I'm not sure what you're referring to. You guys to. need to watch this movie. It's called Seven. It's I only watch horrible. atrocious DVDs that I get for free from all the roommates. Do you know about the internet? Never heard of it. Okay, check it out. Try, maybe Google it. Is that <laughs> the David Fincher film, get... Seven? I'm sorry, I don't know the director, but okay, well, um, it's very, very good. I still have to get through this backlog of terrible old movies. Like, I still haven't figured out if Lucky Number Slevin is terrible or not. I thought it was terrible. So I kind of watched it, like, I put it on the background while I was watching, while I was playing a video game. And then I noticed that, like, because there's some things that you can absolutely do anything while watching them. So probably the worst movie in the pile was P.S. I Love You, which is an absolutely impenetrable film. I don't understand what the point of it is. But you know what's happening. And you didn't want to fuck it? Uh, No, that I couldn't. Like, I tried. But, like, the, you know, like, the old DVD cases had... um, those little holes like cut into them in like the big like recycle logo, even though you can't recycle the cases. Mm -hmm. Um, But they stopped putting those in, so you can't. The big holes. Yeah, Yeah. I can't put my dick through it. Yeah. And like I've I've tried getting my dick through the DVD itself. Like I can almost do it. (laughs) Like it's it's so close, but it's just. (laughs) The hemorrhaging isn't worth it, dude. It's not worth it. That's my point. Well, I think if you like grab it from the other side by like the foreskin and like yank it through, it'll like pull it straight enough. Because like if you're wow, shaking, Nicole, assuming I have a foreskin, <laughs> the, like the audacity. <laughs> I mean, if you're so, my point is, if you're trying to like your circumcised it, phobia is showing bunch up and like plug that hole. But if you like reach through from the inside with like maybe a pair of tweezers and like yank it through. And you're straight. Yeah, you're right, through. Nicole. This and a lot of things would be easier if I had a foreskin. You're literally just being ableist. Yeah, that's this is, fair. This is I'm very traumatizing to me. <laughs> Why? The idea of tweezing foreskin. Just, that don't land, chief. That don't land. <laughs> it might land for some people. That's fair. Yeah, that that is fair. I, I, I have to admit that is probably fair. As much as I'm loath to admit it. Anyways, okay. sorry. Go on. So. It was an impact. We, we're, we're getting off on tangents. We have yeah. to get back to the fact of the matter, which is... When I put on Lucky Number Slevin in the background, I discovered very quickly that it has a very convoluted plot. But because I wasn't paying attention, I don't know if it was like good convoluted or bad convoluted. Um, well, I was talking about the movie Seven with Morgan Freeman. and um... Yeah, but I haven't seen it because I'm watching absolute tripe. Like, um, I don't want to come back to P.S. I Love You because there were like five or six other terrible movies that I watched. Um, from this pile of free DVDs. I wonder what it's like to still be in DVD land. It's really good um, <laughs> because it doesn't challenge you so much. Like when I w- log into Netflix, just immediate anxiety. Because oh, yeah. how do you choose it from there? I hate it. So, no. But when you, when you have a pile of DVD cases that you got for free, because like somehow even when you're too cheap to pay for Netflix, like this is a way to watch movies even cheaper. And you go, do I want to watch this weird... Uh, like distributor copy of something called the dreamers, which is advertised as like a weird, uh, no, it's advertised as like, um, what's the opposite of the word? Like a very respectable, like erotica movie. So it's like softer than softcore porn. I think I haven't watched it yet. It's still in the pile. How is it still but in the pile? Because like the it's movie you should have watched. Well, I was like, you know what? Maybe this, proof of life is going to be good and it's just like russell crowe running through a jungle and looking gritty and like i can't even remember what happens somebody gets chased and then somebody gets rescued it's about as generic as they come i think everybody should just drop off all their old dvds at kelly's place uh i absolutely think this should be part of the show um if you drop off a movie i will watch it you have to hand deliver it to my house um here at the the studio so um, our I live in a community house, and one of my housemates is getting rid of this. You know those big, massive like DVD binders that are like she, there's like sheets. Yeah, of I have them. one of them. We have one that's like full of movies that someone just burned, and they're all like it's all written like holes. Okay, in if you Sharpie can't give me the binder, like I need one movie at a time. Okay. Like, I think there's going to be one a limit. Like 
each <laughs> individual can only put one movie on the backlog list until the whole backlog is cleared. So if like 400 people come and drop a movie in my house, I, you can't put a second movie on until I've gotten through the mm -hmm. other, like, because every, you know, at one person at a time. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I feel like we had an episode a while ago where I asked the question, what do I do with my old DVD porn? Like, how do I get rid of it? And you did not say drop it off at my house. And if I known that was an option, I would have done that. Porn's different. Porn's not a movie. It, sure it is. It can be. It's masquerading as a movie. It has it's very realistic movie? scenarios. Like getting your plumbing fixed and then getting your plumbing fixed. See, here, here's the thing I believe for a long time, and this I ironically believe is that I would take, I would consider porn movies movies if they were like real movies with like a constructed plot and like they're casting actors and they just add the fucking and be like, that's just part of the art. For the fucking is just going to be what's in the movie. It's just, that's just like the method acting of it. But like when you clearly have like a flimsy pretext of something happening around the fucking, that's when you're making porn. Like, I want to see, like, I'll, like this is my challenge to porn directors, is I want you to make, like, a full pornographic movie, everything going in everywhere, everyone and everyone else just, you know, smashing pissers, smashing whatever parts of them they need to smash. But enthrall me so much with the plot the character art the cinematography that i like forget to jerk off then you've made a movie mm -hmm. i'm gonna make you watch antichrist <laughs> i'm so excited to watch whatever you yeah <laughs> just put it in the mailbox that's gonna be the deal oh uh, yes of course uh, it's actually put it in the mailbox is the name of the old porn D the old porn dvd i'm trying to get rid of oh fair enough <laughs> it's funny how these things just tie together mm-hmm uh, I believe you guys were about to do art, though, before we went on what appears to be like almost a 10 minute tangent on Kelly's DVD problem. I the thing is, after last week of like, you know, kind of um, sticking to a script, I, I want to I, No, I have to say this in a way that is constructive. Um, after last week interviewing the most earnest man on the planet who is like infallible in his dedication to reality which is what you want from a journalist um really it's just kind of swinging the pendulum the other way and i just can't not be doing a bit right now no i mean it's fair enough it's fair enough uh you you really almost restrained yourself last time so i mean it makes sense that it would swing back in a similarly aggressive manner yeah well like if they if like i can't make this clear i can't make this any more clear Sorry, it's all the whiskey I spelt on me. That the, if there's one thing that people should take away from watching this show, it's they just are absolutely floored by the jarring tonal shifts. Whether that's moment to moment, <laughs> episode to episode, um, like segment to segment. I don't know. I needed a third thing. Um, I just I don't want anyone to get too comfortable. You know, like having on their gross ass feet up on the couch. Look, it's never going to stop. You can't stop me. I think it's really adorable how they both had their feet up on the couch, personally. <laughs> I mean, it just looks better than this. <laughs> Plus, we're going to get, get the Tarantino market now. Is that, is are, that you, a thing? are you sitting on that thing just so it makes you higher up? I'm, um, I'm talking about It was more comfortable. And also, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Like were you the the feet feet put your feet yes, on the couch? Yes, I was. Uh, no, Tarantino always has weird feet stuff yeah. in his in his movies. Like it's consistent, and once you learn about it, you can't not see it, and oh, it becomes I'm, a problem. I'm familiar. Yeah. I'm wondering why Kelly has such a weird aversion to people putting their feet on the couch. <laughs> like, how do you sit on the couch, Kelly? Um, upright with good posture, staring directly into the camera, um, holding the microphone exactly half an inch from my chin, like a normal person sits on the couch. Yeah, that sounds normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Let's get into this art. <laughs> now the Tarantino audience is really That's in. That's right. I don't think anyone can see your foot. You need to. I like was. Well, it's there. on. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was looking at the wide camera. That Sharon Stone shit from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sharon Stone. I don't know. I'm trying to remember shit. 
When you said Sharon Stone, I was thinking of the the classic. Uh, what's it called? Um, basic instinct. Basic instinct thing. You should definitely do that, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'll do the basic instinct thing, but I don't think she did that in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, I don't remember who it was anymore, and I don't care. Well, you're, th- you're thinking of Sharon Tate. Shit, man, I don't know. I didn't even Sharon like the movie. Sharon Stone was not murdered by Charles Manson. I'm pretty sure she's still alive. I mean, if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is to be believed, so is Tate. That's a terrible joke. Please, please cut that in post. <laughs> <laughs> Should not be making light of the fact Charles Manson killed a lot of people, or his family killed a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very bad. <laughs> but here we are. I must power on despite that. <laughs> oh, damn. Hold on. I can put my feet in the heart. I was thinking about that. Yeah. I was. Thinking. So actually, what is the heart? You guys never explained that? It's about love? Is that... Yep. It, it was just a prop that showed up this show, and I didn't, I didn't ask. It's uh, one of the things that I brought, and it just symbolizes love. It also lights up pink, but the camera kind of sucks, so wow, you can't see it. Wow, you would say that the camera I paid fifteen dollars <laughs> for on Kijiji sucks? Yep. You come into my house and you say that. <laughs> Careful not to spill your whiskey again. Well, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move. That's it. Some whiskey business. <laughs> it lights up. All right. So, Nicole, we need you to do some production here. And I need you to make my camera the full screen um, so that I can use this as the episode thumbnail. I was hoping um, I would get into the thumbnail, I, but that's fine. <laughs> I think I previously stated I'm I'm not logged in as the host, so I cannot do that. Why aren't you? <sighs> okay. No, it's fine. Everyone talk amongst yourselves. On the link. What? I just clicked on the link. Yeah, well, you should be logged in and shit. It's fine. You guys just have a good conversation, and I'm going to mess with the scene. I mean, a good conversation would be, look at how ridiculous Kelly is being over there, that we can all see in the widescreen camera until he changes it. <laughs> yeah, see, there Ew. we go. This is what's going to get the viewers. Yeah. Would it be... All right, I'm it, done with this bit. If it's that, if that, you're using that as the picture, is it still a thumbnail, or is it a footprint? It's a toenail. But um, I like that. Five stars. Thank you. Would recommend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not making any more jokes until these art supplies come out because goddamn they're gonna come out. But, All right, I'm ready. My body is ready. Supposed to be a threat. <laughs> yeah, I have you a glue gun point. Would you like me to just show you them or like tell you what to do with them? I so, shouldn't give you options, should I? I don't know. Like you, so just returning to our thesis statement, the show has to become art. As the only real artist here, you have to help us make the show art. So um, with Josh and I, you have the supplies that are in your bag. And with Nicole, you have whatever she's holding in front of her. Oh, so we're collaborating. I thought this was like, that you two were in art class and I was the teacher and I was going to grade you. That's what I thought no, was No, you're going to teach us and you're going to grade us. No, you are correct. I would say it's the three of us, but you're we're, you're going to like it's it's like a full art class. First you give us the assignment, you explain how art works, we make the art and then you grade us. That hope, was my thought. We can workshop it. I'm open to whatever. I hope you all know that once we do this, my life goals will all be reached and I will have no other mission in life. Mm. So Hmm. Well, I mean, it'd be a little free up time if you want to, like, I don't know, do like production on a live stream or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I picked out um, a couple of special items. Mm-hmm. So these are some gloves you oh, can put on. All right. So the backstory behind these is kind of um, it's pretty intimate. So <laughs> I had to wear these um, while uh, for a job. Birthing a calf. Let's just put it this way. It was for a job that I had um, in someone's home where um, I was in contact with their body. <laughs> All right. And I don't want you to explain what the job is. I just want Nicole to speculate on it. Um, or I'm assuming you were like a massage therapist or uh, maybe a Reiki um, no, no, but in a sense, yeah. Well, the whole point of Reiki is you don't touch them. That's just silly. Keep in mind, these gloves go all the way up to the shoulder. You might have to take off the sweater. Let's do just a costume. Let's do a full costume. Well, I know a lot of people but, that are... But curious. I already have one on. 
Okay. I'm assuming if you're wearing gloves, it was going to be like some sort of like caretaking thing, like maybe a sponge bath or um, like foot massage. Yeah, it was, it was caretaking kind of stuff. Okay. We can leave it at that. <laughs> um, These can just go over the sleeve, right? Sure. They look like they are designed for like one size fits all with the arms. Like mm -hmm. I could just have ham hocks going on. There they should be some like ASMR happening. Oh, yeah, that's good. That crinkle, though. So, okay, are these gloves part, like, are these gloves part of the art, or are they facilitating the art? Like, are they just keeping me clean while I make art? Like, if you're just getting me to finger paint and you don't want to wash my hands after. These are because you keep spilling. <laughs> I'm I'm really <laughs> impressed that you managed to predict the fact that I would spill the whiskey. On I know twice. you really well, Kelly. I've uh, I've I've met not. you about four or five times. <laughs> the next thing coming out of the bag mm -hmm. is some yeah. some pink slippers, which I think we should give to the absent Josh mm -hmm. when he comes back mm -hmm. to deal with. Where did he go? I don't know. I'm guessing to the bathroom. Hmm. So, um, should we keep going, or Nicole, what do you have? Um, I mean, well, I got the gloves on. Should I just go in there and help him so he? Oh, can... that's a great idea. You could wipe his butt. Yeah, yeah. Do they do kind of look like those gloves that you would wear if you were like checking a cow? So, like, you could probably just get right up there. Oh, couldn't wait till the intermission. Into what? Into the oh, to take out the calf. You I'm mean? just a prop. Don't worry about oh, me. Yeah. yeah, generally, but I mean, in this case, if Josh needed help birthing his own. <laughs> um, we did have gloves ready in case you needed help in there. Oh, yeah. perfect, perfect. Well, you know, better safe than sorry, right? Mm -hmm. So these are your your art materials. These are my art materials. Does oh my god, they're need so to pretty. Be plugged in. Only if you're gonna glue something. Well, I don't know. Is that is that not why you brought it? I kind of expected you. Or guys were to you also... purely setting me up for the joke of threatening you with it? I... You know, because sometimes I, I'm I too always good. want to pivot away from art and like get you to explain how <laughs> you predict the future so effectively. Like you predicted every turn of where we're gonna go with this. Um, I have special powers. Fuck. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's so cool. So, um, I kind of expected you guys to bring a couple of things too, and then you could maybe use the glue gun to put them all together. But it turns out it was just me. So I have some wood. The next thing is some rope. Do you want me to get the wood? Sure. Yeah, that's appropriate. Right. You can't ask our yes. guests that. I um, just did. You can ask me that. These are lawsuits waiting to happen, Kelly. Oh my mm -hmm. god, those boots are adorable. Do you like them? I just got them. Oh I man. I think they're fucking ridiculous. But those they are absurd. To make, I love them. They needed to make an appearance. Are they Close denim out. with pink fringe? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's wonderful. I know. Look at that. They're like half Calgary, half, I don't know, New York. I would say like San Francisco personally, but I might be stereotyping at that point. Hmm. They're like cupcake boots. They're high fashion. I'm into it. <laughs> high fashion because it's got a heel, of course. Yeah. Ele elevated fashion, if you will. Are you saying that you wish you had a pair? I'm kind yes. of jealous. Although anytime that I've ever like worn cowboy boots, it's gone poorly for me, usually with me getting bucked off a horse. So I don't know. I think I should leave it to the experts. I feel like most Albertans who wear cowboy boots don't actually ride horses. They just drink. I mean, welcome to my problems when, we, when uh, Edmonton hosted the CFR. And I got to look at every clean press person like, I'm a cowboy now. Mm. No. No, you're I, not. I When I first moved to Calgary, I got out, was at the gas station. Um, I got out of my car and what was it? I can't remember exactly what happened, but the guy that was on the opposite side of the pump got out of his truck, looked at me, tipped his cowboy hat and said, ma'am. Oh and I was God. like, fuck my life. <laughs> did, you, did you get his number? That's <laughs> that is brutal. Holy yeah, shit. 
the worst day of my life. Um, so sorry for making you guys live through that with me, but. Do you live in Calgary? I do. I'm actually going to Calgary for an artist residency from March to April of next year. Oh, cool. If yeah. you, yeah, if you have time or if you would like to hang out, please hit me up. I... That would be great. Hey, no networking. We're making art. <laughs> isn't yeah. isn't art just networking with the soul? Yes. Mm. I'm, Deep. I'm just Deep. I'm just wow. throwing stuff out here to see what sticks to the canvas. <laughs> You'd be amazed what sticks to the canvas. So, uh, yeah, I brought out. I don't know if those are art supplies, but they are building materials. I also have sharpies. And apparently, just some tie up wire. Yeah. Well, you know, some things, sometimes things got to get tied up. That's, I suppose. We'll leave it at that. She just brought a spool of this from work, I guess. So, we also have a wig. Mm -hmm. Would you like to wear this? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Um, I also have some latex cha uh, assless chaps. Is the tag the back? I think so. Those are incredible as well. You seem really into all of my stuff. I mean, I'm it's really cool glad. stuff. This is awesome. I feel like I have a fan. Um, some cuffs. Also ridiculous. Sure. Um, yes, I'm so glad you're wearing that. <laughs> well, it's a wig. What did you expect me to do with it? I'm just, this is just what I envisioned, and I'm yeah. glad it's happening. <laughs> yeah, well, this is why we had you on the show, because you are a facilitator of <laughs> chaos and good vibes, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. How does a person fit into these? They're pretty tight, um, but you just squeeze in. Ah, fair enough. Squeeze it all in, you know. I got some coconut oil, Josh, if you need some help. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I believe we're making like live stream history with like <laughs> I don't know if everyone anyone has ever put on like a new I, I, what am I saying of course someone's done yeah this. come on like, now first I'm, time squeezing into a pair of chaps like this I mean, has gotta be that's probably an entire category I mean porn sites have live streaming services now you're gonna tell me that nobody's done that right but it's like movies is that this isn't porn this is just like real serious art that happens to have nudity in it once uh, you take your pants yeah. off. Like uh like the old uh nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties French film uh movement where you're just like, oh there's an ass in there, but it's art. An artistic ass. I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. I I endeavor to be an artistic ass. <laughs> is that a balaclava? Yeah, so Holy I, I commissioned a friend of mine to crochet me some balaclavas. This is one of them. Um would anybody like to wear it? When you rob a billionaire's house, you're going to be the most stylish robber out there. Oh my god, it's like I'm going to be the gay IRA. Well, I can't have <laughs> I can't have this and uh, you actually can. You totally I've done can. It. Wait, you just it... squeeze. Just try really hard to squeeze it. Also, <laughs> is, also... is the wig going to go? The wig will go over. It'll just thing, flatten. Right? No, un under. I mean, under. it's up to you. But I think I'm going to put it under. I'm not. I'm not you. feeling artistic yet. I haven't learned anything. I've oh. just been directed to do things. Well. There isn't always clear instruction when you're in an art class. It's kind of just like, here are some materials and here's a space. Go have fun. Also, now I'm envisioning the gay R IRA and I'm I'm loving it. I should have said IR gay, but <laughs> it's too late now. We've moved past that. Yeah, it's tight around the head. I know. Just keep going. <laughs> there you go. Tight around the head is a way I prefer it. Wait, I feel like um, I missed the eye holes. Yeah, there's something on your chin. What's that? That's a hole of some this kind. Is a hole. It looks like it's somehow. Oh, oh just there you pull go. It up a little bit, just up a bit. Yeah. A little bit more there, and now. Now you've got it. two eyes and a mouth. There you go. There you go. There's just like a bit of a bit of extra on the top, just a <laughs> little fine. extra. Are you supposed to leave that? Actually. Yeah, I was about to say that you're supposed to leave a little pinch of the top. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to get covered by the wigs, so this, that's the thing. This that's... is why I didn't give you guys my last name, so no one in my family can <laughs> Google this and Google me and find this. <laughs> That's fair. That's also why I don't use my last name. Like, if you give me a hundred dollars right now, I will not say your last name. <laughs> you look so fucking creepy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yep. We need you next we need your terrorist video. <laughs> it kind of looks like chain mail, which is kind of sweet. Like you're like the fucking sweetest knight that ever lived. <laughs> That's You're right. like Sir Gawain. 
So I guess what we should do is kind of just Tinder like says. we should all just get into it, and then um, Nicole can draw us or paint us all. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, oh cool. okay. So like she has the art supplies, and we are just like we're, we're like, the subjects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? All right, I'm into that. Do you have your supplies ready, Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. So I wasn't told what I was supposed to bring for art supplies. So I you said you were going to bring paint, so that was your idea. Crayola ah, Crayola yeah. markers. Hell okay. yeah. Um, it says they're preferred by teachers. Paint. Um. I also have a little drawing board going full Mr. Dress up here. So oh, man. I do have paints I can use. I just thought it would be, I feel like it's more in my wheelhouse to use jumbo markers. Um, I'm more experienced with them. I understand. I also so have a like to wear a wig or would you like to wear this hat that I'm wearing? Uh, I can do a wig. That's the right I answer. have another cowboy hat if we're going cowboy themed. Wow. Yeah, we do need that. We're on top of the wig. All right. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and start here. That is a gorgeous wig. That is just my style right there. <laughs> I'm so glad you're into this. It's not what I would have expected based on um, you. <laughs> Thanks. I have cross dressed more times in my life than are probably expected of people who look like me. <laughs> So who needs the cowboy hat? Do you need a third accessory or do you <clears throat> feel comfortable? Notice. Yeah. I yeah, I think you should throw that on. Well, there we go. Wow. I mean I have- feel like I've met this dude at like a festival or a certain kind of bar. You're, I don't know. You're fully transformed. Perfect. Even better. Like, Let's hear your cowboy voice. Well, cowboys, we're going out riding today, and the best thing to ride these days is actually another cowboy. Howdy. No, 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 no. Now the bit really starts. I have you on the main feed. Well, my little heifers, at some point, you're going to have to go into the past of your life. And in order to find out what you are going to eat in that past of your life, you're going to have to sift through a whole lot of shit. That's the pep talk for you little heifers out there. Remember, your grass is not always greener on the other side. That's that's all I have for that bit. It's a sad cowboy. It's a sad cowboy. What about riding cowboys? I liked that part. <laughs> I mean, I'm just taking um, verses from what might be the greatest band to ever walk this earth, Big and Rich. If uh, my high school was anything to go by. See, that's this is my issue with Big and Rich, is that I feel like save a horse, ride a cowboy is a false dichotomy. You can ride both. You know? I mean, you can. You can. Have it both ways. Um, I guess my issue with yeah. that is that horses can't really consent, so... Yeah, in fact, we, we call it breaking horses, which seems just like the opposite of consent when you're Sorry. training them to be ridden. We call it what? Oh, breaking them. Jesus. Yeah, breaking a horse. What did you think I said, Nicole? I heard boinking. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we save the cows for that. Mm. Oh. oh, boy. We need to use all of these things. Oh, speaking of the cross dressing, though, do you remember the fairy princess costume from like, that's got to be almost 10 years ago now? Like for Halloween? Yeah. Were you a fairy princess? Oh, yeah, you had wings. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, we had to bust them off halfway through the night because night, they were just falling apart. Right. What do you feel about this thing? It's like a boat. Yeah. It is like a boat. That's all I got. See, I'm not thinking artistically. I just look at the shape and I go, oh, this, is a, this is a boat. That's wonderful. All right. But I feel like I need to glue it to something before it becomes I, art. I actually, I'm okay with you gluing that to something. I okay. don't care too much about that. Um, maybe some some wood. Is that what we're thinking? <laughs> well, we've got wood over there. Let's do it. And if uh, if Josh reaches under his feet, there is an extension cord that we can plug the. Is this Russian? Yeah. What does it say? Was that one? That one says Listovaya Kapusta. Uh, it's like, uh, it's essentially. It's the best transition I could figure out for like Russian for kale because like it just means like it literally means leafy cabbage. Apparently kale is cabbage. Oh, these are garden things. Yeah, these are for my garden. And then I, uh, the, you know, the garden died because it was fall. And so I put these away 
And then the motivation I had for learning Russian got real shitty on me. And so now it's just like a weird artifact of my life. We don't have time to get into it. We're doing art. So you don't want to glue kale to the pink thing. I mean, maybe you do. I shouldn't tell you these things. Um, no, absolutely. These are all trash. I, I completely renounce the Russian language and anyone who speaks it. So None of this some like of them real. are like now the feet for our camera rig. So like that that's I've already disassembled some of them and repurposed them. There's something really nice about these. They're very homely, you know? Yeah. Homely? They might just are be you like... saying they're very plain looking and ugly? Yes. Oh. That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back to cool when I was way. seventeen and my or my fifteen and my brother told me I was homely. Oh, that was that's totally rough. Time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, that's almost as bad as the time that she was like twenty eight and her boyfriend told her she was homely. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. <laughs> I do have a degradation kink, so it worked out well for for all parties involved. He some of them are, or, there's even some scraps of wood in there that are not glued together if that'll save us some time or not screwed together or I can get the screwdriver and pull them apart uh sure I mean yeah you could like fold that boat thing into it oh shit oh damn man oh damn this, the sheriff this, is in prison this is a country song waiting to happen right now okay this is literally the French title of blazing saddles <laughs> I have a bilingual DVD, and the French uh, title of Blazing Saddles is Le Sheriff est en prison. The Sheriff is in prison. Well, that uh, that does sum up the movie. Is that what happens in the movie? I watched it like once. I thought it was very overrated. Let's bleep that out because I'm going to get canceled. But I mean, Young Frankenstein is better, but it's a good movie. Sure. I'll accept that. Oh, now I got freedom for having a good take on uh, Mel Brooks films. No, I like Mel Brooks. I think Blazing Saddles is my least favorite Mel Brooks film I've seen. What is your most favorite? I mean, obviously it's Spaceballs. That is fair. I like how we, with the wide cam, we have the behind the scenes now <laughs> of the co-host cam. Yeah, like it's, you're not fooling anyone. To... <laughs> Here, we'll just have to Where's hide the, Kelly? we'll have to hide the wide cam. Hold on. Well, see now, now it's ab the illusion is absolutely flawless. Holy shit! You have an easel, like this is some incredible Bob Rossness. Mm. I think what would really complete the illusion is if you were able to put like a some sort of prison-looking thing over all three cameras, because we are clearly in the same room. I'm uh, I'm more impressed with. You're right. We can just turn Josh off. All Nicole. right. Well, she can I still hear it through the shotgun mic, damn it. No, your mic is still on. Your camera's oh. just off. Uh, I didn't. Okay, All right. Uh, Mr. Dress stuff more than uh, Bob Ross, because while I appreciate Bob Ross, like, Mr. Dress up is like a childhood fucking memory that is. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of still interested in those assless chaps and how one would squeeze you, into that. You can do oh. this. I believe in you. Should I attempt to squeeze into these assless chaps? Yeah, we told you this like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, okay. no, I, don't, I don't have to take you. Like, I like that you're asking the question. Like, you think that anyone is going to say no, but like, clearly <laughs> no one is going to yes. notice that. Allow me to go into the changing See, room. See, and for this a is second. what people who are going to watch this recording are going to be so bummed out on that they missed the chance to be the commenter in the live stream saying whether, like, we would say vote now on your phones. Do you want josh to put on the assless chaps on camera or off camera I, I think you need to take off the pants just yeah. so you know okay oh he's going oh man look at that no guy. it's gonna be uncomfortable and awkward we can give him some, some peace yeah uncomfortable and awkward that's what i wanted that's what i brought you here for i mean i wouldn't do it on camera okay well i mean that's borderline reasonable but we'll let it go you, you know i already got an email about like how because i like i don't check the actual gmail account for this show it only exists to allow us to create a youtube account and i kind of just logged into it trying to i don't remember what i was doing but um there were all these emails from youtube saying like hey we may have like reviewed your video for flagging it may not it may be an 18 plus video but it wasn't even the ones where we talked about like i don't know who is your hottest cousin or i don't know what are the other like very troubling things we've talked about, Nicole. Um, 
I don't think we ever talk about anything troubling or problematic. Or yeah, like, it was a really innocuous one, like talking about board games or something. But that was the one that got flagged. So I didn't do anything about it. I have no idea if people can still watch that clip on YouTube. But So fun side story. Yeah. I tried to learn to knit once, and this is what I made. Oh, it's like a cock warmer. <laughs> yeah. Is it a knit condom? You know, I was going for a scarf, and then it just looked very phallic. It is a so tiny scarf. Yeah. yeah, like, is this, like, scarf for a fetus? Yeah. Okay. Is this a scarf for ants? That's thoughtful. No one ever knit scarves for fetuses, so. So, the hot, the glue gun is is currently plugged in. It's hot. It's steaming hot. Okay. So, um, also, my hands are really sweaty. Is that part of art? <laughs> you can take them off if you want. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, speak of getting naked, I'm just going to disrobe <laughs> this like nice yeah from the table. don't get it don't yeah oh, that actually fits. it's oh already a whiskey god. on oh my god i'm so excited my dreams might be coming true right now someone else wearing asses traps for once all you had to do was ask <laughs> yeah honestly my ass has been seen probably more than it should have nicole only you can hear the shotgun mic can you hear what he's saying no not at all Okay, well, what he he's was, saying is, ooh wee, mommy, it feels so good. I also, love wearing these chaps. He also said that he was being very self-deprecating and said that basically That's, no one would like to see his butt, but we do want we do want to see it. Well, this is what you're oh my god, up on yeah. the couch, on the couch. All right. there we go. So yeah. the chaps are assholes, wow. but the boxers are not. So already I'm, I'm, my meter is leaning toward cop-out. Well, I mean, again, oh, I no. Cop out rather than cock out. Yeah, but think of how we would take off on OnlyFans. <laughs> you yeah. Take off really fast on OnlyFans. I'm gonna wear these for that. I was going to say, that, please leave your underwear no, on. You don't get an option. I don't know why you think that's like a decision you get to make. You're going to get hot and sweaty. I'm, you're lucky you're not dancing. That's fair. That's fair. I've never been one for dancing. However, I might be one for assless chaps now. Did you miss the boots, Kelly? Yeah, let's, um, let's draw attention no, to those boots. boots are good. They're great good they boots. Are. I'm, I, I would never besmirch those boots. I'm just trying to get a song that uh, um, that uh, Josh can dance to. I, I am not going to dance. Show. I will wear asses chaps, but I will not dance. I'm sorry. All right, we're just going to glare at you while the song plays. That's fair. Well, you could dance, Kelly. Really. Well, please, I'm going to dance again. That. Look at those guys dancing. That's, that, that's the spirit of country right there. Yeah, the Ranger is playing this song on the harmonica. That, that's, that's the real country vibe. It's the assless caps, the cowboy hats, and the potentially copyright violating songs. Hell yeah. Drip. Yeah, don't drip on this like vintage. Don't drip on the vintage couch. It's gonna make it hard, Kelly. It's gonna drip. This this thing is made of garbage wood. Okay, put all the things on here that are going to. Well, your uh, your boat thing plus that. Can I have the boat There's back? There's the here. Oh, so you should probably close the big window again. I'm willing to give up my first knitting project for this art project. This is sac true sacrifice, you guys, mm -hmm. for art. Oh, okay. Nicole didn't want to get it rid of it. Oh, no, she can't. Ah, oh, yeah. fucking hot. Ooh. Ow. Ooh. Do you want me to go over there and do who, that? Who put the mouse next to the... <laughs> God damn. Who let Kelly use a hot glue gun? I mean, if you saw how poorly I handled a normal of, uh, thing as a glass of whiskey, I don't know why you trust, trust me with a hot glue gun. Oh, well, look who's fucking smart. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. I hope everyone is watching in HD. You can see her last name on the glue gun. What? Yeah. There's no HD here. It's, no, it's in 720p. They're going to be like, <laughs> Mike uh, Obama? Oh, like, they're not going to be able to read it. Yeah. Anyway, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to go get a screwdriver to disassemble these. Oh. Also, I like the well, glue gun as a prop. Are you saying that it should just be part of it? It's cowboys? perfect the way it is. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Nicole? I said I like the glue gun as a prop because you guys are dressed as cowboys. and Yeah. Now we got six shooters. Robber, so. Yeah, that's true. This is, this is literally like cowboys and robbers like a combination of like cops and robbers and cowboys and respectfully represented indigenous peoples mm -hmm. okay so i want to know what you think of this idea josh because when i brought it up with david before he didn't think it was a good idea what's that 
So, like, imagine like a tabletop adventure, right? Yes. And it's called Cowboys and Indians, but, but, hear me out. Like, literally Indians. I mean, what if you made it like a Bollywood production? Yeah, like, no, no, like Cowboys and people from India. That probably exists. Yeah, Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is that. And we'll do all the accents. We can probably. Maybe not do that part. But I mean, like, you That's could actually have like. You lost David too. David was like, "Oh yeah, you guys can do that on a show when I'm not involved." I mean, I'm just saying that, like, you could. You're probably right in that there's already a Bollywood like cowboys thing because there's there's a uh, there's a Korean spaghetti western called The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. So I feel like if South Korea has done it, then Bollywood has definitely done it. Okay, so if the three of us are dressed up, are the good, the bad, and the weird? Who who's which? No, it's fine. We'll just do. It'll, it'll be fine. That's right, I am the good. I'm the bad, and you're the weird. Probably. I am wearing assless chaps. With underwear on, which would be like considered weird, I feel. Can you believe people make normal art? How do they have fun? <laughs> um, I'm, trying to think of what, I'm trying to figure out what else to add to my painting, but I kind of feel like it's finished. Oh. It's looking good so far. Thanks. Um, there's oh, Kelly in wow. jail, clearly. Um, and there is Micah on the couch in the middle here. I decided not to draw anyone's faces because I realized that was the easiest way to ruin my painting. Um, and then here's Josh over here. Um, I just highlighted the important things. Um, I started on the assless chaps, but clearly I didn't get very far before I realized that they're highly disproportionate to the rest of your head. So. <laughs> I appreciate the effort, nonetheless. Thanks. Um, I also love, I love the way that I look in that. Thank you. I feel very flattered. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I may have no, I may not told you this, but I am clearly an artist myself. Uh, and you'll be happy to know that we're actually going to tokenize that and put it on the blockchain. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, please pay me one million dollars for this NFT. <laughs> Listen, nothing is less fungible than this boat because I dare you to make another one of these. <laughs> just try it. Mm-hmm. Just fucking try it. God, I, I was really glad to hear you just go off on NFTs because, like, as yeah. someone who's poisoned their mind on Twitter for far too long, I see them now way too often, and I want to like stove my head in every time I see one now, especially those goddamn monkeys. You know, those were a scam, right? It's I mean, all a scam. No, 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 no. People literally got scammed out of the monkey money. I mean, again, it's all a scam. Also, Sorry, someone pirated a bunch of money? NFTs. So it's all a pirate. I know. The best part was though is that everyone's just like, ah, yes, they're non-fungible, and then someone pirated them, and they're like, oh my god, they funged the tokens. Use that too. This thing is gonna be beautiful when it's done. Okay, can I have that one back? No, no, no I'm gonna use it as like a brace. Yeah, I felt real bad. This uh, artist that I know posted on their uh, Facebook something about. She posted, or the yeah, they posted something about their art, um, and then someone else, someone commented about how they should start selling NFTs, and this person was like, I don't know what that is, and then someone was like, Oh, you should look it up. It looks really cool. Um, I was just like, I felt so bad for that person. I was like, Please don't look that up. Please don't ruin your life like that. Just please continue making the art that you make and <laughs> making people happy yep. with it. Do not fall for the crypto bro scams. So, uh, as you guys may know, the best part of Crayola um, markers is that you can turn them into lightsabers and fight your friends with them. So, And then your first swing, they just disintegrate immediately. Josh, this is a very sturdy weapon. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I-, I love how, like, the first thing that kids think about when they like start stacking stuff like that is like i've made a sword i'm gonna hit you with it like first thought into your head is just like i have made a great weapon and i'm gonna hit someone with this thing whether they like it or not yeah well you watch enough power rangers this is true i would say that'd be a segue but honestly if we just keep going with kelly's art rate here i don't mind sticking on another week to do more games which I think would make Kelly happy as well, just from a planning perspective. 
No, this art is done. I mean, what 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 else would you do to add to this boat? I mean, this could be like. Yeah, you don't have a sail. Okay, sail. well, give me a second while the glue hardens. <laughs> I can keep gluing while we play the game. I didn't bring I, any more glue sticks. I yeah, think. I, I mean, I also have a glue gun and glue sticks, but I feel like we should uh, we should honor the game. And oh, I mean, how many? Wait, how many parts were you planning to do this story? Uh, I mean, this this is in theory. I could do a lot longer, but I think I agreed originally to four parts. Okay. Yes. Because if you did a fifth, they would take us evenly to the end of December. Oh, that's the scheduling thing. Yeah, I could probably make that happen. To be honest. All right, let's let's just have these negotiations during the stream. This is the perfect time to do it. <laughs> this yeah. is where we talk. This is where we talk logistics. Well, you know, given that we're already at um, wow, ten thousand viewers. No wait, mm -hmm. sorry, an hour six. I feel like if we start making Micah's character now, we will have about as much progress in this chapter as we did in the first one, which was. So much. So why don't we whip out the character sheet and you can start explaining to Micah how it works and I'm going to keep gluing. Sounds good. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't know why you put those. Glue, truly. Oh, the, the tray is for rolling dice because I'm considerate. Oh, yes, of course. Wow, these are fancy character sheets. All right, so, I mean, the name part is self-explanatory, so. Is it? I mean, what do you want your character to be named? A lot of these people have done puns. Uh, Kelly has not. Instead, he just made his horrible. Oh, am, I introducing, am I introducing my character? It might be good to know who I'm playing with, so yes, I'm not yes, just in a, yes. in a vacuum. You better, you better just uh, introduce your characters first. I have and Nicole then... go first, because i got to pull up my tablet here. That's fair. Uh, oh. Do you have your sheet on hand, Nicole? Uh, yeah, let me just minimize this. Um, my character is Dr. Gillip McCrawfish. Um, I basically look like a blobfish with a mustache, um, and uh, as a uh, disclaimer, my uh, character is based entirely on a figment of my imagination, and any uh, any resemblance to real life persons or places is uh, entirely coincidental. Um, anyways, I'm a Southern businessman that exploits people struggling with mental illness. Um, I host a show on which I shame people for profit under the guise of offering them psychological help. Um, yeah, again, that's, uh, you can call me Dr. Gill and, uh, that's my character. Nicole, I think it's a really transparent ploy to say it's not based on anyone. Everyone knows you're dunking on Ann Landers. Like, come on. I thought you were Tyra Banks. <laughs> Tyra show. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a really unique premise. Like, I'm I'm really it's glad terrible. that I'm I'm really glad that none, no one like this exists in this world, profiting off of the suffering of thousands of Americans. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a I am a writer on the side, and so I, all my ideas are totally original. And uh, yeah, I would never stoop so low as to base my art on a real person. Um, anyways. That's my character. Okay. And have you, uh, since uh, pulled, your up, pulled yours up, Kelly? Oh, I've pulled mine up. Um, yeah, so my character is named Smegma Glanz. And um, I described uh, my character as being generically handsome, sort of an Atlantean Josh Hartnett. He's very norm core and wears trendy brands like Diesel or whatever the underwater version of Diesel is. It's just Diesel. Uh, it's just very terrible, and it's like killing all the fish. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what clothing brands do. Uh, yeah, so my background is adventure capitalist, which we've never fleshed out, but uh, maybe one day we'll get to it. Uh, and yeah, the, the name Smegma Glands is Atlantean for calm, blessed one. Uh, my unique talent is that I have a very sick set of business cards. Also has not come into play at all. Very disappointing. And, uh, oh yeah, and I have a ventriloquist dummy named Endo, which has also not made it into the story yet, but here's hoping. Cool. Let's see what Smegma Glenn's card looks like. It looks exactly like this. <laughs> okay, so you don't have a character because you're the... I'm the GM, so yeah, GM. No, no character for me. Wow. So what I'm noticing is that the art supplies I brought glue together really well, and the art supplies you brought, like, repel glue. Oh, man. But The idea is there. Feast your eyes on this boat. Yeah. 
It's like a tongue boat, which that is the exact kind of uh, cruise I hope to offer one day. <laughs> it just looks like a Final Fantasy boss. <laughs> you can kind of see it coming together. We'll finish it after the show, and then we'll get it real good. If I may give some honest critiques as an art professor. Wait, yeah, we do do this section really quick. So you need to critique ongoing. my art. It can be ongoing. So yeah. your work in progress, Kelly. We'll take a look at that. Right now, it looks like it's kind of in pieces, but I am, you know, I think that the inclusion of the Russian uh, language was really thoughtful and maybe speaks to your roots a little bit, which is really important in this day and age, you know, talking about your background and so on. That's no, 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 I was planning important. to root and then I didn't get a chance to. Sorry, did you mean root in the Australian sense? <laughs> no, um, that's. That's really inappropriate, actually, Kelly, <laughs> in this classroom context. <laughs> Ooh, I like that you're working as we go. Um, this is working even better now that the um, pimples are sticking upward. Oh, no wonder it's so fucked up. I forgot to add, like, an... Anyway. So those, I'm guessing, are, like, the uh, the nerves or the sensors on the tongue. Well, it was supposed to boat. sit more level, but I clearly didn't put another piece of wood on anyway. I think you did, it just fell. But, you know, I'm not giving you any allowances because this is our art critique end of semester art critique so you don't get any excuses kelly oh, <laughs> i can't believe this is like the real life version of this nightmare i constantly have where it's the end of the semester and i'm like oh shit i haven't gone to this class the entire three months and now i have a final coming up but you're making it real life like it's nightmare december art school like you've been teaching me art for three months and i haven't noticed like <laughs> oh fuck I mean, that just sounds like my science 30 in high school where I literally ignored the class the entire time and wrote the diploma before I'd finished the midterm because I was doing it by correspondence and just ignored all the stuff wow. and still nailed the class. I've, I've never been taught a lesson in my life. Else. Also, can we unplug this before I burn yep. myself or something valuable? Overall, it's a B plus. Wow, that is so much better than I ever <laughs> got in any real kind of art class or creative project, so... I can't even, like, I'm over the moon right now. You hold on to that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were playing some <laughs> tabletop role-playing. Yes, so we need, to, we need to make this sheet, first of all. So we need to come up with a name. Um, Actually, let's move this out of the way. I so mean, you can, can I do the name table. last? I can't yes. think of names, so... I'm also uh, terrible at names. That's fine. So I, I thought of our guest name last time, and I forgot <laughs> to pay attention. So I'll come up with a good name Actually, for you. Actually, can I guys use that to, like, write on? Yes, absolutely. Wait, Josh, what was your prompt for what Micah's character could be? It was... Jesus, what was it? Oh, Christ, my phone isn't in these pants. <laughs> Those aren't pants. <laughs> you, you, why don't you, guys, you explain the stats to her? And uh, Wait, did we want to have our uh, piss intermission? Nicole, do you need yes. your piss intermission? Don't call it my piss intermission. That feels yeah, like really Nicole's on. piss intermission. <laughs> Let's go. Piss Some of us... See, at least Josh had the balls to just piss right in the middle of the show and just like float the rest of us. Yeah, because P is stored in the balls. So, <laughs> yeah, it is. the balls to do it. Intermission? You mean interpission? You know, I was like, thinking of going like for that, that, and I was above that. <laughs> Did you I pull it off that. during that period of time? 
Sorry? Did you did you pull it off? You managed it? I thought you asked if I pulled off during that time, and I was like, well, you're not supposed to ask me that. <laughs> I what I do lie. off stream is none of your damn business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, the stream is what we're talking about. I did. I did pull off during the break. Also, is that a big rock grasshopper ale I see there? I, yes, it is. It's uh, actually not a grasshopper ale. It's a go getter Oh, that's also a good one. The gozes are so good. Yeah, I when I you should know that when you ask me, oh, what beer are you drinking? It's always the beer that you left at my house last time you were here. <laughs> Did I leave that at your house? Okay, my guy came with a character. I don't think I bought it. Oh well, shit. That explains why it's a goza then. Well, thanks. Yeah, it goes with everything. Gil Patrick Herring is my name. Yeah. Perfect. I like right. it. It's a I'm great Atlantean it. name. That is a great. It's very traditional. Yeah, it means um, calm, blessed one. <laughs> you go to. Okay. What so was the prompt? The prompt was you are an Atlantean citizen of any vocation who saw the report of the last battle where the Atlantis Rangers fought a backhoe mech and won. And after seeing that report, you wanted to join up. Sorry, did you say back home, Mac? Back home, Mac, yes. Mm -hmm. How dare you? She's a nice lady. Is is this like when um, like you go to like a real like country school and they're still teaching like the men to do shop and like the women <laughs> to cook? Because it's like back home, Mac. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard back home, Mac. <laughs> back home, Mac. I don't know what that means. A giant um, robot. Okay. So I think I'm gonna be a floating uterus with a brain. Okay, I'm I'm in that... I'm in for it. I'm into it. Out. Some somehow not the weirdest thing we've had so far. Is the so with the brain is the brain in the ovaries or are you specifically only the uterus without the like fallopian tubes and ovary attachments? It's a uterus with all the all the fixings and also a brain. Oh, see, I was I was thinking that the ovaries were gonna be like two like parallel brains that sort of like Ooh, synchronize with each other. I like that. Mm. Yes. Yeah, because otherwise, where is the brain attached? It doesn't. Does do I have to do, know? Do, do we attach well, a brain in a jar to anything? Where's no, your where's brain the brain all the jar? fixing means because like okay, so you've got the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and the uterus presumably all attached. Like, is the actual vaginal canal considered all of the fixings when it comes to? Or, or does it stop at the cervix? Stops at the cervix. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't have this anatomy, so I'm not entirely certain of what all the fixings includes. I didn't I didn't get that sex ed class in grade six or whatever. Well, it's time for it now. Okay. I think you get it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm appreciating your drawing right there. The rendering. Yeah, I did a rendering. That not only wanted. am I learning about art, I'm also learning about science. <laughs> Can you show the, anatomy. Can you show the rendering? I... Um, okay. <laughs> Yep, I'm into it. I didn't say it was a good artist. <laughs> I don't know. I, okay. I, I completely understand what those are upon looking upon them. And what is art but trying to send a message? Nicole, have our like, generic tags been on the screen the entire time? Yes. Beautiful. That's the kind of production value people come here for. So my background is human anatomy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, you, uh, wait, wait. Uh, you need to refresh me from last time. Are Atlanteans human or no? They are... <clears throat> off awkwardly into the mic. <laughs> and deflect the question. Atlanteans are what you want Atlanteans to be. Sometimes Atlanteans are uteruses with brains. And sometimes they're... Uh, a fish head with a man's body. <laughs> and sometimes they're a yellow journal journalist uh, from the 40s. Sorry, did you say yeah. yellow? Yes. Was he yellow? No, no. Technically, Kelly's the yellow ranger, but yellow journalism was like uh, sensationalist yeah. journalism. We were just different shades of yellow ranger. Where it was just like, you know... Uh, the Atlantean rangers are just like like there's like yellow green and then there's like lime yellow and then like gold like they're all just different shades, shades of, of yellow. 
Uh, yellow journalism is like a, a, a paper boy carrying a picture or, or carrying a paper and going like, uh, man bites dog. And it's like a guy eating a hot dog. It's basically just sensationalist headlines to sell papers and oh, sometimes so just outright bait. lying. It's old timey clickbait. Click, yeah. Clickbait before clickbait. Cool. The example you gave, I feel it was really harmless compared to actual yellow journalism. Oh, but... yeah. So it was horrible, horrible shit. Like um, if you I'm trying to remember the publisher of one of the big papers in that era. And it was like straight up like going to murder victims and stuff like that. And just like getting as many pictures as they couldn't like really like graphic headlines and stuff like that. It's really fucked up. Journalism is a really fucked up history. Yeah. Unlike the present where it's extremely cool and normal and nothing bad happens. Yeah, well, if, if, as far as I can tell, we've literally solved every problem that ever plagued us in the past 100 years, and we live in a utopia now. God, I, I'm so excited for the future. So grateful. Thank God we sorted that out. Okay, so it's asking me what my unique talents are. Okay, so you don't need talent. a new unique talent, but you can make one if you want. You're just going to suck ass if you don't have one. Um, you just you go with what you're, what you're hard done terribly so far because I haven't used my unique talent. I think I'm going to have the ability to self-abort. Self-abort? <laughs> or the ability to what? Self-abort. Oh. It doesn't mean I'm killing myself. It means I'm killing the thing living inside me. No, I, I go, I'm smelling what you're yeah. stepping in, homie. And some, I'm... some call that a soul, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm always... is, wait, is on your... On the... On Eel Patrick Harris's... An, on Eel Patrick Herring's anatomy... Is the cervix exit only, or can you like swallow up an enemy in order to abort them? Oh, or will we yeah, just find this out during that the That was the idea. Yeah, I would like the womb would like you would you know you would get you would get brought in, I'm kind of like it. Kirby. Oh know, yeah, I, okay. I like become them and then spit them out. Right, that, kind of thing. that fits with the color scheme we have. <laughs> yes, yes, so, it all works out. Your talents is also Kirby. Yeah, you just write Kirby, and I'll understand. I've played enough Smash Bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, inspirations. Yeah, I just ignore. Yeah. Okay. okay, you can so ignore everything but the bo the three box, the three small boxes on the left. So you have to decide. Okay, I want you to imagine. The, you see, there's mind, body, and spirit. You can kind of imagine what those represent. And, sorry, they're called body, understanding, and psyche, but they're body, mind, and spirit. Don't ask why. It would involve me telling you the name of the show, which I still haven't done. But the three stats are body mind and spirit so imagine each of them is at minus one right now and oh. you have four points to distribute to them however you want oh. what do you want to make them <laughs> so like personally i distribute them fairly equally my body is at zero my understanding is at one my psyche is at zero yeah so I guess like, right, but they all started at minus one. So I brought them all up to zero, and then I brought my understanding up to one because I want to be smart. Okay, well, I guess I'll do that. But you could like you could go hard on one and leave the others. Yeah. You could be a three. How, how do you feel a uterus with brains others. would identify with the body, mind, and spirit uh, trichotomy? There, I, I feel was thinking like, a lot of psyche would be the big one for me. To be fair, I, if I saw a floating uterus coming at me to like consume me that would do a lot of psych damage i feel like me. you should just min max into psyche you should be three psyche and minus one on the other ones because i was thinking like intuition you know that's like absolutely like, all that comes from the uterus what? this is science absolutely yeah. this is definitely how it works where if you have a uterus you're just naturally more intuitive than someone who does not have a uterus this is why i can't Facts. figure out fuck all without an instruction manual this is why i had to see, have someone come and tell me how to do art yeah women are just walking instruction manuals for mm -hmm. life okay so three no that's 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 understanding this one is yeah. oh sorry that's i was okay. looking at the yeah never no mind worries. no you're 100 percent correct put the three you're into it no you nailed it with your intuition and i was <laughs> flailing with my lack of intuition and, and then, then what negative, is this uh that you don't have to worry about negative. these are all yeah. just in case i we need them for any other thing but you can now. have something in your inventory if you want yeah. Like, I don't know, some kind of like, Sword. <laughs> let's just say for sake of argument, you want to have a ventriloquist dummy, you can put that in there. Okay, now I have to think about this. Maybe my inventory is like twin puppies that are like growing inside me. Do it, don't think about it, just write it. <laughs> write it down. Twin puppies. I wouldn't even limit yourself to growing inside me, just write twin puppies and we'll see how it comes in the story. Okay. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't say growing inside you because I feel like that's going to get us into a crux of like, 
if you self-abort, do the puppies die too? Is that like the the thing, you, the decision yeah. you have to make? But you could birth them right away. That would be a, a moral dilemma. That, that is a moral dilemma. You're like, I've eaten this criminal, a criminal, and I could end them by self-aborting, but I would also kill two puppies. This is like the railroad question, but even harder. So your character is named Eel Patrick Herring, but is a floating uterus. Does your character have some kind of gender identity or pronoun or should i just be like that should i just always say that yeah it's an it can i change my name Absolutely. like two can i change two letters of my name i mean yeah. well what am i going to do say no to yeah, you do exactly what you want to do i want you to, to have a good time you do whatever you I was want thinking eel matric pairing i'm not sure i follow the pun but give her <laughs> there's no pun oh, okay. i just like m's better Herring because we're under what? Okay, it's fine. Yeah, but, it's fine. It's fine. You know. I support you in all your decisions. Good. All right. So now that we've made a character, good, uh, good little recap right here, <clears throat> and here we go. It's been a few weeks since the battle, since the battle, and the reporting by Jeff Flotsam has resulted in mass support for the Atlantis Rangers. As a result, more than a few people have attempted to volunteer for the force. These people are usually rejected due to the suits not responding to them. However, our heroes find themselves talking to a new applicant, and little do they know that this one will be accepted into the fold. So, out where we start here, we'll set our establishing setting right here. There is a headquarters. There is a headquarters for the Atlantean Rangers, and you guys have been now... Uh, set up there for a couple weeks now you guys know know your way around the place now and you've been turning away applicants because like i said the suits have not been responding to these new applicants so we like fully defeated that first yeah it's gone component. it dead okay and this yeah. is like time has passed yes time i know you explain this but i zoned out really hard yeah i think it's the adhd well i get to okay so today i was at my doctor and i was like kind of meekly like you know i just i don't know if the dose can be upped on this because like i feel like it hasn't like maybe I'm a little more focused, but it's not dramatic. Because I know when people have taken like expensive medications like Vyvanse and Naderol, they're like, wow, it blew my mind. And I took this weird knockoff medication. And so I was kind of like, all right, I, I don't know. Like, I'm really hoping this will work because I don't want to spend a bunch of money, you know. And uh, my doctor was just like, oh, yeah, you're on like a little bitch dose. Like, we'll up you. And I was like, oh, well, fuck. Like... <laughs> No wonder. So starting tomorrow, boy, howdy, am I going to be focused, which does not help us today. It does not. But yes, uh, so you guys have been there for a couple weeks now, and you've been turning away new applicants because you have to basically try to make them match with the suit, and it's just, it's not working. They're not drift compatible? Uh, they're not drift compatible. Yes, absolutely. Uh, which is an original idea I came up with, and definitely not from Guillermo del Toro's Pacific Rim. Um <laughs> So, however, though, there seems to be a, uh, what appears to be a floating uterus. Oh, that's a very Pacific reference. Fuck you. I don't even have a witty response to that. Just fuck you. <laughs> Get off the stage. <laughs> so, you see what, from the security camera, what appears to be a floating uterus coming towards the door. Uh... And I'm assuming knock on it, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell the character how to do that or how they're going to do that. So we'll just start from there. You guys see a floating uterus on the security camera headed towards the door of the Great Tower, and that's where we'll begin. I wasn't listening. I was eating snacks. <laughs> well, Nicole, uh... being that you were paying attention. My, I mean, I, I uh, my wife Robin uh, has a uterus, so uh, I think I know how to handle this. Um, and I walk over to the door and uh, open it, and I say, "How to there? Uh, how can we help you?" <laughs> I'm here for the audition. <laughs> mm. uh, all right, well, uh, come on, come on. I direct her over to our black couch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, howdy, I wonder what that is a reference to. Now, now, I, I'm all about exploiting people, but hold up now. Let's let's just wait and see if she fits in the suit before we make sure she never wants to come back here again. Yeah, we're huge body oh, gamers. Okay. If you don't fit into the one-size-fits-all Power Rangers suit, <laughs> like, you cannot be part of the the crew. It's like, sorry, we don't, we're not going to go tailor you your own Power Rangers suit. Like, you know, fit in or fuck off. 
Excuse me, Kelly, these are the Atlantean Rangers, a series of people who have defended Atlantis over the last 2,000 years since they sunk into the ocean. Wow, they sound very powerful. <laughs> They're almost like powerful rangers. Powerful also, Atlantean Rangers, or Power Rangers for short. I also realized that Dr. Gill just totally like gendered the floating uterus without asking. And wow. That, which really... Like as wow, much as I, like, Nicole. Yeah, which really, I just like. I feel like just is really in character for Doctor Gill. Like, and I'm just gonna roll with it, and that's just gonna be how Doctor Gill, <laughs> how Doctor Gill rolls. He's just gonna completely continue to misgender everyone and not ask or apologize. Doctor Gill being a huge piece of shit. Wow, what a know, new direction for this character. It's more likely than you think. I'll actually accept all pronouns as a floating uterus, so no worries, everyone. <laughs> the way God intended. Yeah, Doctor Dr. Right, Dr. So, Dr. Gale has no reaction to that. He's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm all right. Entirely well, sure. I I'm not entirely sure Doctor Gill knows what anyway. that is. I don't actually care about feelings. I just care. I don't care about gender identities. I just care about profits. So they're here for the audition, and. Uh, what what are your guys' plans? Like, how are you going to make them audition? Okay, so um, if you direct, I would say that, that there's nothing to do with me. My character, my my character, Smegma Glands, uh, has a huge obsession with like cowboy culture because living underwater, um, he's only heard of it, so he can only just kind of like imagine what it's really like. So he's really obsessed with anyone new coming in and just kind of like, just kind of putting on their best cowboy character of any kind. And so like on the, like on the posters that, um, that Dr. Gill so like neatly tied up, like, like, like Dr. Gill made these posters that are saying, you know, um, uh, like non copyright infringing Rangers wanted for defense of, area not unsimilar to super sentai but you've never heard it from us and like you know really typed up and spaced out beautifully and kind of explaining broadly like come to us with your skills and then what spank mcglans did was go and write on the um on the posters in crayon like must do cowboy bit <laughs> so i really want to see the whole just like cowboy character of of these new recruits yeah, and that's what drew me to the poster in the first place because um, I love when someone hand writes on a poster. Um, just shows like really good organization. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess um, being that you were drawn to the Atlantean Rangers with the promise of getting to act like a cowboy, I guess do you put a do you put a cowboy hat on both of the uh, the brains, like both of the the ovary brains? Yeah, I do. Perfect. Perfect. All right, and uh, and Smegma, do you have any props that you need to uh, to assist with the cowboy bit, or are you expecting them to bring their own props? Um, Smegma has like one like plastic black cowboy hat that he could give out, but if the person shows up wearing their own cowboy hat, that could be fine. Okay, okay, all right, and uh, Doctor Gill, what do you wait? No, I could also hand the person like. A cigarette to drip out of their mouth. They couldn't smoke it, but they could just kind of have it dripping out of their mouth. That is an important part of the cowboy static. If you don't have a cigarette, then you have to have chewing tobacco, and uh, that chewing tobacco is a bad time. So, I would recommend the dripping cigarette. You know what? Those things aren't here. Never mind. Well, there's some pretzels. So yeah, yeah. Use yeah. a pretzel as a smoke. All right. So. Uh, how are you going to attempt to act like a cowboy to sell yourself on on the cowboy bit to a, to uh, placate smegma glands and make your way into the Atlantean Rangers? This is on you. Is that you're like, the one auditioning? Is that the, I'm in, just is that the introduction to my audition? Yes, that, but is. that was a question though. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 need like how are you going to? act like a cowboy like you, you're trying to sell yourself as a cowboy for the atlantean rangers how are you going to do this like what is your plan oh i see um i'm gonna try to harness like a really a really gay um cowboy that's working 
at a a rural gas station. Oh, like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so that uh, that's acceptable. So you guys are gonna have to, you guys are gonna have to travel to the outskirts of town to try to lasso a a uh, stereotypically gay cowboy working at a rural out of town gas station. So, using the uh, the resources of the Atlantis Rangers, their giant ship, which I'm sure is definitely not burning taxpayer dollars doing so, you guys uh, head out of town. So, well, wait, so wait, wait. The location. audition involves us going to find an actual unsuspecting gay cowboy. Yes. Like we're all method acting. <laughs> this is this our, our new going live, baby. audition. I love it. Yes. I love it. Okay. I just want to be clear you what's so happening. Much faith in me. They're like, let's make this as good as possible. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, my character, yes, Magma Glands, yes, who usually talks like Keanu Reeves, is now participating in a bit, right? I mean, this is technically a bit. Okay, so within the story, Smegma Glans is playing a cowboy named Starch McCollar. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we'll be speaking in that voice. I just wanted to be clear for the audience. We wouldn't want anyone to watch this episode and be confused or put off in any way. Well, I think my plots are very, very coherent and Absolutely. definitely don't go off the rails immediately. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, like, okay, so we're, we're, we're rolling into some kind of like Backwaters. You, you guys are in your like your your flying craft, right? Our flying cowboy craft. <laughs> okay, so we we roll up on this person, and uh, uh, I shout out from my ship in my best cowboy voice of "Ahoy there," which is things that cowboys say for sure. Yeah. All right, so we actually get our first. I gotta grab the dice actually here. Please hold. Yeah, hold. I need my fucking dice here. Come on. You got one job other than the other jobs I delegated when you showed up. I can pass them. Oh, it's okay. I'll get up. Okay. Ah. Flexible. Yeah. There we go. You have to be to wear those. <laughs> I forgot you were wearing the chaps, Josh. That's great. <laughs> Oh my god, it's not even visible on camera. Yeah, we we gotta maybe, maybe we aim sit up here so that you can see. Maybe we gotta aim his camera down, or I could turn the wide camera back no, no, on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. has it been off? Could you like straddle the back of the couch? Yeah, I'll go up too because I'll right. sexy boots on. Oh, all right. I'm gonna there. straddle the couch here. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> this is our lower I don't think bodies. You know what straddle means, but this is better. That's all I that's all I have. I can't actually <laughs> straddle the couch. You can move it away that's from fair. the wall. That's too late. That's We're already in this position. Oh, man, yeah, this is a fe this feels like a more genuine cowboy position. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> All right. So the only problem with this now is that Kelly, can you pass us the uh, dice tray? No, I'm gonna build something. <laughs> Here, I got you. Perfect. Because I'll, I'll hold it for you, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to roll some dice to try to lasso this gay cowboy. Lasso me. Perfect. Yeah. We got ropes. Perfect. We got props for everything here. Yep. All right. Shoot, shoot some ropes over my way. <laughs> All right. So I'm rolling. Yeah, you're rolling because you're you're attempting to lasso a gay cowboy oh, here. Okay. All right. So you got holy shit. We got ten subtract. Your body was negative one, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So that's a nine. Rude. You lasso him, and you ever watch like uh, calf roping or anything like that, like a rodeo sport? Oh yeah, every day. All right. Well. I was going to say, you, know, you tie him like a calf rope, but we can just say hog tie. That makes it easier, probably. Oh, yeah. You don't just lasso him. You hog tie that gay cowboy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he is. <laughs> this isn't a hate crime, we promise. <laughs> and you have In a... the moment the ropes landed on him, the cowboy consented to it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is. Uh, you now have uh, a gay cowboy all tied up. Do you want to add that to your inventory? Yes. Is he coming with me? Oh my god. Okay, cowboy. Yes. Dreams come true. Oh, perfect. Dr. Gale says, I'm not sure what we were trying to prove when we came out here, but uh, that was pretty impressive. And I say we just add this floating uterus to the team. Whew, that was easy. <laughs> What do you and, think, uh, Smegma so, so, um, Smegma Glans, as Starch McCaller, method actor, wanders to himself. Mm, I wonder if we could find some sort of um, 
some sort of problem to solve or animate a fight within a 20 minute span. <laughs> and right you would be, because there's a trial up ahead, a difficulty, a good pre-test for this new Atlantean ranger. How do people live in Atlantis with the amount of like enemies and trials residing around every corner? Same way Gotham City does by beating up the poor? It sounds terrible. Oh yeah, hell yeah, let's go beat up some <laughs> poor folks. Dr. Uh, Gill he says in character. Gets hard. <laughs> 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 Full on erection. When you guys say when when he hears someone say beating up the poor, he's like, mm, ready. <laughs> ready, ready to go. You see a small business owner being harassed by three large goons in suits. Sure. So we're gonna go. Um, okay, wait. So we're still arriving in our sort of like open decked pirate ship or like we're not in a mech anymore no no no. you're just in a normal ship that transforms into a mech when it needs to okay well whatever kind of weaponry it. i like i assume that um as like people that are just out there to harass the poor like we're, we're probably going to just like who seems poorer the small business owner or the the people bullying him that's a good or question her. You see that the shop owner has that stereotypical like shop smock on and a nice white pressed shirt and black slacks. And the three business or the three um goons are wearing like those stereotypical mob of black suits with black ties and white shirts. One of them's got his sleeves rolled up already. You can see his arms are very hairy. So is that, is that relevant? Okay, so smang my glands. Now your damn business. <laughs> who okay because now we're not doing the audition anymore i feel like smeg mcglans has dropped the character okay he's dropped his starch yeah. mix yeah i made it in so yeah yeah you're now in the i'm in so now i'm being my authentic self and i'm looking at this kind of showdown happening saying i feel like we should stay neutral we don't know who's in the right here i'm i'm uh, still pretty uh shook by this large erection happening so i don't really i don't really know what to do i'm like this is a, such a weird team there's, there's a lot happening, so I stay silent for now. Yeah. All right, Dr. Gill, it's up to you. Who are you guys attacking? Dr. Gill can see that these uh, fine men in these uh, very fine suits um, are clearly, you know, just trying to exploit this business owner and uh, shake him down for some money. And, you know, I have a lot of experience with that, so I can really empathize with that. So I immediately assume that they are in the right. Um, and I stride on up to them and I say, hey, fellas, uh, what's going on over here? Uh, any chance we can strike up a business to you? What sort of, what sort of racket you guys got going on here? The three turn and they go, oh shit, it's the Atlantean Rangers. And they look like they're trying to resist immediately breaking into a fight because you mentioned a deal. And instead of like acting like they're just there to to buy something they they immediately like lean into the business and they're like well you see we're just uh we're just trying to remind our associate here who pays for protection around here and who pays for protection around here should be him because he might get hurt randomly so uh nothing to see here really nothing yeah. to see here at all so yeah, that sounds like a standard shakedown. And uh, I mean, I've, I've done a few of these myself and I must say, uh, I think you guys need to be working a little bit harder. I think at least one of you needs to have your suit jacket off and your sleeves rolled up a little more. Um, and I think uh, you need to the be- The sleeves like, are rolled up all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just not enough. Now what you really want to do is like accent the bicep. Um, but more than physically intimidate them, you really need to intimidate like their welfare as well. Um, you need to imply that you know who their family is and where they go to school. Um, I didn't hear any threats about going after their children. Um, just yeah, just some notes here. Don't take them with a grain of salt. But I am I am uh, pretty experienced in these things. All right. So uh, to make that speech, I'm going to need you to make a, an understanding roll. Oh, okay. Well, understanding I got. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I got a six. You got a six? All right. Well, 
they don't seem to take kindly to your advice because they one of them turns around and says, you think you could teach us how to do a shakedown and takes a swing at you. Okay. Is it the one with the arm hair? It's the one with the arm hair. So I immediately Typical. So I immediately like I try and dodge it and I try and grab him by the arm hair and yank him off balance specifically with that. All right, that's definitely going to be a body roll then. Oh boy, that's not good. Are these dice only meant to roll ones and twos? I got a six. Another six. All right. You have to appreciate Nicole's honesty on a pair of dice that no one else can see. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. So when you go to yank the arm hair, you instead grab the sleeve that's or, uh, that's rolled up a little bit, and the snap gives way, which throws you off balance, and you start stumbling towards the other two. Okay, can uh, I turn this the into meantime, a headbutt? That's a good question. We'll have to wait until the next round, oh. because now it is Smegma turn. What is your plan, Smegma? It is Smegma turn. Smack my turn. <laughs> okay, so A, I got poorly medicated ADD. B, this has been very chaotic. And C, I was spending some very important time trying to put the heart in front of both of your junk. <laughs> so let me just try to recap this year. Junk? Yeah, your collective junk. Like you mean like tr our treasure, tr our treasure trunks. Yeah. Treasure trunk. It's well, not junk. Yeah, we don't have time on, to get on this tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, junk in a good way. So, of the three approaching figures who are vaguely bandit-like, yes, we have now assaulted one of them who is the hairiest. Uh, well, it's so much not so much that you assaulted <laughs> and that he assaulted Doctor Gill. Right, he assaulted Doctor Gill, but we yeah. have done something to the hairy one. He is he's thrown Dr. Gill off balance because Dr. Gill sucks at combat. <laughs> right. And but we're not in a mech, we're in a yeah, like you're a person large to person. Ship. No, no, now you're person to person. Okay. Because Dr. Gill drug you over to confront them. I can think of no better time than now to whip out my ventriloquist dummy endo. Yes. Um so um who who is which of the three is the one that is like most threatening to Dr. Gill? Uh, well, the hairy one? Well, no, because he he went off balance, and now he's headed towards the other two. So they're basically like in equal equal danger right now. They're both like you know the whole puffing up their chest, getting ready to do okay. some swinging. So I stand between the. Two, I try to jump between the two of them. Okay. And I put my arms up. One of them has endo in it. Yes. Okay. The the other one, the one that is not endo, I put the like which one? Okay, left and right, right there yes. in front of me. Which one has the worst vibe? Uh, I'm going to say the one on your left has the worst vibe. Okay. So the one on the right, my right hand has endo on it. My left hand makes a fist. And I go... Uh, oh, God, I got to say something inspirational. Now I'm about to get fucked up! With, with the with endo, the dummy, and then I punch the other one in the groin. Okay, so that's going to be... That's going to be a body roll right there. So my yeah, my bot my body is zero, so it's gonna be a straight roll here. I got a ten. You got a ten. I uh, sure did. Yeah. Nice. Your fist solidly connects with the groin of the man who, as he pulls over, you can see he's got some tribal tattoos on his neck and he is super white. Okay. So just it doesn't I, I change what I do. I continue yeah. connecting. Yes, no, you continue connecting. I just want you to know that the person you're hitting is not a good person. Okay, that's good. And <laughs> as this is happening, I want Endo to say to the other one, like, yeah. this is coming for you too! <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so that's happened now. And as that's happening, um, I've already forgotten your name. Uh, eel? Eel. Eel, yeah. yeah. Eel. If it's, so it's still Eel. All right, Eel, you see a pink suit emerge from the from the ship and fly towards you and wouldn't you know it it is designed exactly like a floating uterus <gasps> with two ovary brains i get the pink suit <laughs> and it fits perfectly and as if choosing you right there you feel like you are an atlantean ranger and you're ready to fight i'm so proud the only non-yellow suit of any on <laughs> landian ranger that's ever lived <laughs> Uh, and, uh, so you, you, you have your suit on now. How are you going to engage with these three goons that are currently fighting you guys? 
So I think what I'm going to do is just use some shock value um, to kind of like just we shock them into like paralysis. So yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the growing um, tw uh, twin puppies uteruses. Uh, uh, growing inside the uterus? Growing inside me. What's that called? The uh, embryos. Yes, the yes. puppy embryos. The puppy embryos. I mean, so you're the anatomy like, expert. You should tell us. <laughs> um, uh, it's the embryos, Kelly. Um, I'm going to show them, and I'm also going to kind of like sh like swing them around a bit. They're going to be fine. They're going to be fine, though? Okay. But All right, it's so going to weird some people out. That that I mean, that would weird me out if I saw it. So I'm going to need you to roll well, these right here. Weird people out. This is definitely going to be a psyche roll. All right. Which I think you specialize in anyway, so... Five. Which is good because you have uh, eight in total then, because that was three, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yep. So with an eight, you successfully swing one of the two puppies around, which frankly traumatizes the hairy-armed man mm -hmm. who has gotten up from throwing Dr. Gill and just sees a swinging embryotic puppy and just just looks, he looks lost, like the thousand, years, uh, thousand yard stare where he's just like, my God. This is just like Vietnam. That would do some damage. Now, just, I'm not sure. I, I don't want to be smart to Jamie says, but I'm not sure I'm buying this trauma. Can you hit him with that just so we really get a sense of what pain is like? Okay. Out of 10, how hard do you want it? 10. <laughs> 10. Please, please do not do 10. Let's go with a 5. Let's go with a 5. Okay. Got to move your mic. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. This is the reaction to seeing the puppy embryo. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't hold your mic properly for that. <laughs> we have to do it again. No, we do not need to do that again. Do the other leg. Oh, Jesus. Even it out. It's going to open up a whole new fetish Yeah, you here. don't want it uneven. Like, come on. This doesn't sake. awaken anything in me. <laughs> so, we have one laying on the ground in pain from a groin punch, and one who's just, like, lost right now. Like, he is, he's reevaluating his life, having seen an embryotic puppy swinging through the air. <laughs> so you guys have you guys have one left who is currently facing off against Endo, and uh, Doctor Gill. Being that you were the the first, you will start this round as well. You are still stumbling towards one of them. Yeah. Wait. How has this opponent reacted to Endo? Has it, have they reacted in any way? That's a good question. Can I get you to roll a psyche roll, Kelly? You sure can. Are you really in pain? You're like holding. Oh your no no. Leg. Okay. Good. No no. It's all good. <laughs> He doesn't feel anything ap anymore, not after doing this many episodes of this show. <laughs> so you said Psyche roll? Yes. That is a three. A three. That's good, right? I'm going to say that the endo voice is not intimidating him at all. In fact, he not only is not intimidated by endo, he slaps endo across the face. Wow. Okay. Whose turn is it? Uh, well, it's Dr. Gill's turn. Okay. Um, so Dr. Gill, after having some time to consider, decides not to try and headbutt this person, but rather to shout into their face, How dare you? I can, I can sue you for this! Um, okay, that's all. And trying to, I'm going to try and intimidate them by um, claiming that I have some sort of legal case against them. That's fair. Okay, that's that's going to also be... That's Is gonna be Dr. Gill like a sovereign citizen? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an understanding roll right there. Understanding? Well, now that I know. I know my laws. Oh, fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I swear this is a loaded dice, but it's loaded to make me lose every time. So I rolled a one and a two, but my understanding is two, so I got a five. You got a five? Mm -hmm. He looks at... at he he doesn't respond negatively or positively. Instead, he just like is trying to recall in like his brief legal studies class he took as a kid, whether or not there is uh, tort law for that sort of lawsuit. And so he's, he's, he doesn't move for the turn as a result of that. And then we move on to Smegma. Oh. Okay. So at this time, what has happened is my... Uh, Ventriloquist dummy has been slapped by this enemy. Yes. I immediately drop Endo on the ground going, ah! And uh, with my now free hand, I look for the sharpest object I can find. All right. So uh, that's going to be a perception check, which I'm going to put under understanding. So oh, that's a plus one. You're giving me a grand total of seven. A seven. In the goon's pocket, you see a nice 
nice silver ballpoint pen. Like the pocket of the one that's currently just the one I just slapped. Down. Yeah, the one I just slapped Endo. Uh, okay, I'm going to do my best to grab the ballpoint pen and just stab that person repeatedly in the heart. Ooh. All right, so that's a body check right there. That's still not the most violent death we will have seen on here. The ice cream scoops are up. <laughs> if I am able to down this person, I will go for the eyes. That's fair. Got a seven. A seven. You manage to obtain the pen, and you get a few good stabs into the chest, uh, but he throws you off before you've done any real damage. <laughs> I, I can live with that. That's fine. It's just art. Art it, is impermanent. It's, it's a burning survived. man taught us. It's survived. Yeah, good um, gluing job. So. All right, and then it's on to Eel. Eel is going to see what, what, what is Eel going to do now. Sorry, what was the result of that last one? I did. I uh, Smegma managed to steal the pen, a I ballpoint tried. pen, and stabbed a couple times, but he got thrown off. Okay. And, yeah, so it's mostly cosmetic damage. So um, I get inspired by this peripheral rope swinging happening. <laughs> that is. Um, so I decide to turn the like stretchy part of like you know the fallopian tubes into a lasso, and. Uh, Sorry, can we back up a second here? Yep. When you say the stretchy part of the fallopian tubes. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. We all, we all, I mean, we all, what I meant was, we all know what that is. What I meant was like the stringy part of the anatomy, which is the fallopian tube. It's like yeah. the tube that leads okay, the, the tube egg itself. down. Yeah. Okay, we well, said the stretchy part of the tube, and I'm like, there's a specific there's... part of the tube that stretches. Guys, like, there's a really I don't know. stretchy I'm here part. To learn. I'm here to learn. Okay, fine. There's a really stretchy part, you guys. It's about an inch long. Mm. It's super stretchy. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I'm using. Okay, <laughs> All right, on. so you've got that. You've got it. You're using like his last so, The teenage so, boys tell each other. Like, oh yeah, there's a stretchy part of the fallopian tube, but if you get your dick in there far enough, you can stretch it right out. Feels great. Oh, boy. That sounds like a super teenage boy thing to say. Anyway, that would be. If a teenage boy can say the word fallopian successfully, I will. Um, I'll be very proud. Yes. So I swing it, and I guess this would be a body roll because this would absolutely be a body roll here. Is... Let me get the dice up. Come on, body. Jesus, you might be getting shitty rolls, but they are not. Ten right there. And you, using the fallopian tube lasso, successfully wrap the fallopian tube lasso around... Good message. Uh, around <laughs> the gangster and hogtie him similarly to your uh, gay cowboy. Amazing. How many more opponents do we have? That's that's all of them. Did we just do this, you guys? Yeah. We did it. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yes. uh, two, we two captured. Did it together, <laughs> equally, at the same amount. <laughs> and uh, the tied up one is going to struggle for a while. And he says, the president won't let you get away with this. And I I look at this person and say, I am a bad enough dude to contravene the president. And that's where we'll end this one. Ooh. All right. So if you want to give a really quick, like, teaser of next episode or summary of this episode or just say something dramatic that happens. Okay. Literally anything that will give me about 10 seconds to get the... Uh, Next time on Atlantis Rangers. Castle's traps. We find out what that gangster meant by the president. Does he mean the president of the United States or the president of Atlantis himself? Could be You'll a president to... of some kind of rotary club. You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Castle's traps. Castle's traps. Castle's traps. We're going to have to workshop the lyrics to that uh, musical stinger a bit, but I think we're getting there. I do feel I think like the that. assless chaps definitely added to it. And also the lyrics. I mean, when have assless chaps never when have assless chaps never not added to something? Mm -hmm. Never not? Well, they've uh 
they've never contributed to more clothing being put on. That's for sure. True. Absolutely true. Well, Micah, mm -hmm. the host of the show has a question for you. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. Micah, do you have anything you would like to plug? Um, any socials that you would like your... Would you like your name to be attached to the show in any way at all? Or would you prefer that nobody has any idea where to find you after this? Because it's been a horrible experience. <laughs> no, it's been awesome. Um, I have a website and I have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, Go on. Yeah, if you... Uh, we don't have uh, pre-built tags for these ones, so if you could just uh, give a quick little, like, it's at... I'm sure someone cool. will put them in post, but it will help yeah. if you say them verbally right now. It's kahousemi, K-A-house-M-I on Instagram. And my website is M-I-K-A-H dot C-A. Thank you for your time here. Thanks for <laughs> contributing to the game. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Micah, this is great. You're fantastic. And thank you for teaching us art. I feel like I have learned so much, Nicole. Yeah, you... I feel like I was equally entertained and horrified by the image of you in that balaclava. Well, I don't know if you saw this. I, done? I've I, hit, I found an undo angry. button by accident. Anyway. We will ignore the fact that your mics are still on, even though your cameras are off. Sorry, go on, Nicole. Uh, no, that's, I think I said all I need to say. Do you have a story for us to end off on? Well, less a story than a precautionary tale, because we, as we've said, we do like to, uh, like, we do like to balance out the amount of silliness and seriousness. And I... I haven't been keeping an exact track, but I feel like this episode did lean towards the silly. So I feel like we can get serious a little bit. I mean, and, silly how? Well, it was a bit silly in that I spilled my drink. That was unintended. I apologize. But we do get a bit silly here in the program. You know, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very forthcoming. It was not intentional. And it was less than our usual professional self. But I will balance it out by suggesting a little bit of uh, bylaw safety for everyone. Okay, let's and, hear it. Yeah, so as we all know, um, you know, uh, we do about an episode a week. And about three episodes ago, it was September. So fall is upon us, right? And a lot of people are going to be looking at their leaves, their deadfall as stuff they have to get rid of. And, you know, piling it up for taking it to the ego station seems like a pain in the ass. Putting it out to the curb seems like a pain in the ass. And a lot of us are going to want to stay warm. And we tend to just be like, all right, you know, fuck it. Let's drink some Lucky and we'll have a fire. But depending on what kind of bushes or trees you're dealing with, you may want to be careful around the specific bylaw permits around what you're actually setting fire to. So again, depending on what part of the tree, what kind of tree, what you want to do with it, we encourage all of our viewers to call 311 and ask whether it's legal to you know, set fire to their brush or whatever it might be, uh, lest they get caught for the charge of uh, uh, intending to burn all their branches. 